Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ. Hey Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Woohoo! If you've ever wanted greater, su- greater sweetness and support in your life, then do we have the angelic show for you. <laughs> Today we'll talk about connecting with your angels, getting guidance and sweetness, and feeling like the universe has your back. Mm. That Plus we'll talk about heart openings, patience, eaching, soul dreams, allergy miracles, imminent RV sales, envisaging your future, greater peace and harmony, and what in the world the pookie cave has to do with anything. So <laughs> welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> okay, what is the Pookie Cave? So Jessica has moved from the main part of this retreat center house mm-hmm. to um, one bedroom, actually the bedroom that we sleep in, as the farthest room away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> to do her work during the day because my energy is full on and she's looking for as much. We, we Our theme right now is peace and harmony. And so when she's syncing up with interview after interview, after class, after interview, she's like, I need to find what works for me. And so she's like, don't forget to mention the Pookie Cave. She goes, you can call it the women's cave too, but call it a cave because that's where I've gone away from the light and into the peace and quiet. I get it. I I think it would be hard to be married to you. I mean, I love you, Michael, but it would be hard because your energy is like really big. And I'm saying that from someone, see, (laughs) even Rue agrees. And I we just had Anita Morjani on talking about sensitive is the new strong, talking mm-hmm. about the power of empaths. Yeah. But with that said, I'm very empathic. You're very empathic. Jessica takes it to a whole new level so that if I have like today, it's a beautiful day. But one thing ended up stacked on top of the next, stopped on top of the next. And we're actually having to or getting to run out the door right after this. And what that means is if I have an energy of Oh, I've got to get this done. I've got to get this done. I got to get the other thing done. Then she's in the other room going, I, 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 I. <laughs> I get it. I get it. We influenced each other as partners for sure. I remember, have you, have you ever had Donna Eden on? And she's like, she and her husband talk about when they're together, how, like, it, it, how their en- energy influences each other. Put us in touch with her, please, because that was actually on our list on Monday was a, we need to reach out to Donna Eden. We've had her daughter on, uh, who's amazing, but we haven't had Donna on yet. Oh, she's beautiful, beautiful presence and spirit. You'll like her a lot. Thank you. So our energy has radically shifted this week, and or, or mine is, and I'm trying to remember whether there was a triggering event Friday, and I believe there was. And I don't believe I recall what that event was. You wrote me and said, like, I can't meet today. I have this, like, emergency something or other. Yeah, I don't even recall what it was, but it was a shifting point. Hmm. It was one of those nodes on the timeline where everything shifts. Hmm. And, And there was a surrender that took place Friday where I just said, you know, I talk to the angels all the time. I teach about channeling the angels, all, all of this good stuff. And, and Jessica's standing behind me and she's got her kind of this goofy grin. And so she may remember. So she's, so she's raising her hands and she's saying, I remember, I remember. What was this? I crashed and burned on Thursday. I crashed and burned on Thursday. I have no recollection. Okay, keep going. Yeah, you recorded a show. And you <gasps> That's what it was. I crashed and burned on Thursday. That, it was such a beautiful thing, and it didn't even make it into our list. So, normally the way our schedule works for the show is um, Tuesday I teach a class. Tuesday evening I teach a class and channel it for that class. Wednesday each evening I channel and teach a class. Thursday I do an interview. Then Friday morning I channel and do a YouTube show on my own solo. And then I have my, my interview with you. Uh, Plus a few other things. I guess I channel and teach another class on Sunday, uh, our YouTube Live. There's a lot of channeling, a lot of teaching. And it it works out beautifully. A little bit full, but beautiful. 
So this week, Tuesday channel taught a class, Wednesday channel taught a class, and then my schedule, unbeknownst to me, was flipped to fit in a guest Thursday and Friday mm. this past week. And so I had to go from channeling the evening and teaching what I channeled to get up channeling and teaching immediately afterwards, and there was nothing left in the tank. That's what you said. You said, I don't know what my chi will do. <laughs> it's like, totally understand. And I, of and all people, I get it. My chi went kabam. So I recorded Thursday and the show about 30 minutes in, because I had my EA watching it to see if it could air. And I, I, I'm like, I don't think so. Till about 30 minutes in, I was somewhat on the rails. I was, I was ragged at best. And then I blew up to where at the end, and by blew up, not meaning upset, not, not that at all meaning stop, well, uh, wait, uh, okay, go, uh, stop, uh, wait, wait, uh, uh, go. And then finally we get to the end where I'm supposed to say, you know, click here, subscribe, do this. And I'm going, I can't even get the ending. Oh, um, yeah, you, fr you fried yourself. You totally fried so yourself. Thursday evening, I said, um, I, it's the, my visceral reaction, when I have a strong visceral reaction to something, it means watch the energy. Don't watch what's coming out of my mouth. And so Jessica's like, you know you need to. And I'm like, no, no, I don't need to, to re-record. I, yeah, I know that's what you're going to say. I don't need to. It's perfect. It's fine. It'll work great. I'm not going to re-record. Knowing full well that I'll pull on the strings of the energy and know I need to re-record. Mm. And so Friday morning, uh, I said... I give it to you, angels. I don't know how in the world I'm going to do this. I am not on a whole new level. I'm not driving the ship. You want this interview. You're going to need to do it. <laughs> and that's when I emailed you saying, I don't know if I can do three interviews in a day. Oh. I did my guest interview Friday morning at our time slot Friday afternoon. I said, all right, angels, you want this? It's yours. And just a beautiful show just downloaded right out of me. Oh, great. Saturday, similar thing. Gave it to the angels. Sunday, gave it to the angels. Came into this week. Are you good for shedding? I'll, I'll rock you a little bit more. Came into this week. And our workload through the end of the month is, is quite full. Then one of our classes ends and things back off a little bit. Um, and I'm just like, angels, I'm giving it to you. I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm not going to try for anything. I'm just going to step forward. It's yours. Mm -hmm. And this has been the most peaceful week. It, I call it like a week of sweetness. Oh, nice. S such sweetness. It's beyond surrender. And surrender can always have a tinge of I give up. This is not that at all. This is a sense of you guys take the work. <laughs> Clearly, the show is greater than me. You do it. And it has been beautiful. Jessica talked about, she's like, you got to talk about peace and harmony. It has been such a peaceful week here. Oh, Even nice. when a lot of stuff has taken place. This is running a, a, a beautiful sized business like this. It's worldwide. Things take place. Well, that's fantastic. I'm so happy because you have been running at a frenetic pace for, I don't know how long, ever since you got, you left on your RV trip, to pride about now you've been like running at some ungodly pace squeezing in things right and left while at the same time simultaneously cutting and clearing things out it's been actually really interesting to witness and um yeah i've, I've been kind of going through a similar kind of process um but it almost even like i i'm at a different place where um my inclination and desire and I realizing who is the me who 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 wants to do this like get things done, move forward create a project you know help the world you know who is that person and I realized that it's my ego because I've been doing the I Ching a lot and when I do the I Ching it will be like slow down do nothing wait 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 and I've been, way. yeah, I've been getting that for like two weeks. And so when you have like engines full of gas, I got the keys. Where do you want me to go? And it's like nowhere has <laughs> been, been the answer for the last two weeks. And it is so hard 
when you have that energetic fuel and you want to move forward and you're kind of a person who moves forward and, you know, this is kind of the ego's way. I'm like, wow, look at this. This is an interesting thing that's happening to you. Like, and, and, the, and anything you, re- it's funny because my husband said, isn't any time you read something in the, in, in the I Ching is like patience wins the day. <laughs> it's like, seems like anything I'm reading lately is always the same. I do, I do yarrow stick readings. I do coins. I do other methods that I have for the I Ching. And it's kind of like the same thing over and over and over again. So I'm like, okay. Um, and, and on what I recognize is the part of me that doesn't want to follow that is the egoic part that defines herself as like helping the world. But I realize actually embedded in that is a selfish part because I want to help the world. But what if the world doesn't want to be helped in the way that I want to help it at that moment? Um, what I'm realizing is that often I just impose my will upon it versus literally when you're in synchronicity you go with the flow and if the universe you know you're doing the I Ching and it's like stay still and you move forward then you're moving outside of the synchronicity of the world and you're imposing your own flow and order onto what you think should happen so that was my big insight over the last two weeks is recognizing that we do not control the flow (laughs) If you really are in the flow and listening, then sometimes the thing to do is nothing. And that is one of the hardest places for me to be. Um, But I've been doing it and I've been really proud of myself. Um, I just got the shot, my second shot, and was down for like, for like almost a day, like chilled in bed. So that kind of was a self-imposed rest. And I've been doing what I never do, which is I sleep in between big things. Yeah. And it's made such a huge, I never would do that because I would never give myself permission to do that because I always had to do. So now I'm just taking a little mini naps and I can't tell you because I met, I think I told you this a couple weeks ago, I met someone with, uh, with memory reconsolidation and how important sleep was, how important sleep was to cementing the gains and integrating, but it's been huge. So having these peaceful respite moments for you and not implying less effort, I'm just so happy to hear you going in that direction. I think you'll just have more, not only peace, but joy. Yeah. It's, it's fun. I have been sleeping a bit more. Rue has allowed me. I forgot about that. He's out of my lap now, so we'll see if he starts singing. He'll go back into my lap. Um, but we have daylight, uh, daylight savings or the time shift, which usually you think of being overtired because of it. Well, the rooster hasn't, between you and me, the rooster doesn't know the new time. <laughs> so he's getting up an hour later. Oh, that's good. Yay. So I don't want him to hear me with that and then check his rooster watch. Because then he might forward his rooster. Oh, he's actually going over to his house to go take a nap in it. That's so cute. Right now he's looking to take a nap. He just got up from a nap. Oh, And I'm not there to put him. He likes going into his dog kennel and then he goes oh, into the, the, the guest house. But we'll be taking him for a little ride in a little bit. It, it's interesting. So I'm going to work through a process with you. So I've gotten more sleep this week. Okay. So we've been looking at RVs. It's funny you mentioned the RV tour mm-hmm. because we get to go back on the road. This is not our permanent home. Right. And we get to go back on the road in a few months. And we went and looked at RVs. We had a timeline planned out, which is 12 week departure from now, purchase and or 11 weeks from now, purchase an RV five weeks from now. But we went out last weekend and we figured out one of two RVs of what we want. Actually, our hearts know it's one. Although a friend of ours... A uh, specific one or a model and make that you want? uh, Probably both, but a a model and make that we want. And um, a a dear friend of ours who is a Hollywood producer, um, he had just bought one and he goes, no, no, don't get that, get this one, Uh, get the other model from the same, same company and here's why. But it seems like that's a head versus heart thing. What he says all makes sense in paper, and yet I still want what I want. And so Mm -hmm. we have to go back there and check it out. Mm -hmm. During this week, here's what I've learned. And of course, there's pressure from salespeople and blah, blah, blah. And and he's a 
uh, not a billionaire, but he's well off and well up there. And he's like, I'll speak with this person. They're going to give you a deal like you've never seen before. And I did via text and, and they loft a third of the price off. Wow. I'm going to get it for less than the price that they're going for used blue book. Nice. So, so I can turn and sell it later on if we want to get something else. No problem. I'm like, so this is how you roll. I like this. <laughs> But what we've seen happening over this week, and, and we know the RV world, is that everything's disappearing mm-hmm. uh, uh, because RVing is going so insane right now. This week I've watched kind of RV, RV disappear after RV disappear, mm-hmm. or one come into a showroom, and then like I got an email back an hour ago. The day's actually been interesting on this. I have a sense not to rush. This gets into the, 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 the Dow. At the same time, I put in like an email yesterday to 11 different dealerships and 10 of them got back, or no, 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 only out of the 11, two got back to me, Mm -hmm. both were sold out, one might be getting one back in in June out of 11 that showed in stock. Mm. Wow. And there was another piece to it and then I got heard back from another salesperson today that said the one that was coming in on Monday that I wanted to show you just sold as well. Wow. So we know which we want, one of two. They're both in stock at the dealership that we were going to visit tomorrow morning. We wanted to move very slowly. (laughs) However, (laughs) isn't this interesting? And we get presented with this in life. So is there a time to move quickly, slowly. Yeah. So you're going, is this a part of, you know, it's, it's funny because, um, so I've been getting like, you know, all these Tao messages, like, you know, accumulate energy, you know, this is a very Taoist kind of thing. And then, um, yesterday, um, I, because of the, um, well, I guess I've been doing all this heart opening and, um, And recognizing as you go down the spiritual path, you start recognizing that you're blocking, you know, in your heart, in your stomach, you know, other parts of your body have tightening and blocking aspects. And when that happens, um, you block the full life energy and you also block responding um, in the fullest way to what's happening. So I've been doing. I have all a term for this. We've, yeah. we've been we've been teaching this more from a manifestation point of view of finding these sticking points of energy. Yes. And I call them bottlenecks. Yeah, they're, that's a perfect way of saying they're bottlenecks. I call them guarding because in some ways, um, it's both an ener- it's it's an energetic bottleneck. If you imagine you have a highway running through the center yeah. of your body, it's a bottleneck that way. Um, I guess vertically and then horizontally it can be a shield and so it shields you from other people and I have been putting on these blocks I don't know it's like you know I have like a gigantic you know citadel with a wall and a wall inside the wall and like an armor outside of that wall you know it's it's just something that you unconsciously build over you know 50 whatever number of years and then over the course of time a lot of work being done lately I've been just like you know, it's okay. You can lower the wall. It's okay if you can lower the wall. And actually it doesn't feel like that. What it feels like, it's like, Ooh! like it literally like I'll, I'll meditate and I'll feel like uh, it, it, it is like someone sucker punching me and I feel like, Ugh! and then like the wall lets down. It's like a more like of a Berlin wall smashing down. So I've been doing all this heart opening work and as a result of doing all these, like removing all these layers, all these layers, all these layers, um, two things happen, like you remove a lot of your personal layers, but um, there are ancestral wounds that you have and unconscious wounds that you have from a time that you don't, you're, you're like zero to seven in utero, you literally don't remember any of them, but there's still physical wounds that your body feels. And um, when I heard on Thursday that those women were murdered. The Chinese, the Asian women were murdered at those um, at the spas. It, I literally was in shock, and I, I literally shut down because I could not deal with it. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. I'm literally shut down. And then yesterday, all yesterday, 
I was like letting all of that into my heart. And when you let things into your heart, you feel the pain, unresolved pain that you've had, that your ancestors have, and that people around you at this moment are having. And it was awful. It, I, I mean, I was crying, intermittently crying throughout the day yesterday. And Was it awful and cathartic? Was there a benefit or, or it might yeah. be too soon? I think it was cathartic. I mean, I had, um, uh, here's what I would say I found from that whole experience. And I, I am going to change I, I have a new way of interacting with people because after that experience, I realized no one called me to say like, hey, were you okay? Because um, who would have thought to call me? Like, I, I'm not in Atlanta. I'm Asian, but like, and I seem to be pr pretty fine, generally speaking. But I realized if you have unhealed wounding from similar types of instances where being Asian, you were bullied, or you have ancestral stuff that you're working on, you're going to feel all of that because it's unresolved. So you have something in the external field vibrating in your internal field, and, and it's an opportunity to heal. So I thought I'm going to go in and cathartically like squeeze out <laughs> or like allow to, maybe a different way is like melt out all those, all those pains that I've been storing for how long and that my ancestors were holding for I don't know how long. And so it was cathartic and it was painful. And uh, I think though, the way my, in, in, the way that I've, I understand this to be is that when you when you create guarding and you have these blockages they're there for a reason until you no longer have to have them and then I love that yeah they're there for a reason until you yeah until and they and it's like um when I've talked to people who've taken depression meds like let's say that this is your normal amplitude of feeling emotional responses the depression medicines put it in a smaller band, so you're operating in kind of a neutral band. And so it's almost like the, for me personally, when I was putting up guarding, it can kind of contracted everything to this kind of life experience. Like you're living, if this is the full potentiality of how you can live life, you live it in this band. And so as a result of opening my heart, I'm, I'm feeling the exquisite highs like that I've never experienced before, but then also the exquisite beauty and the pain of feeling this, this hardship. And what I would say is the beauty that I'm finding around the corner of yesterday's full of crying is that I think I understand not fully, I'm never going to fully understand what other people are going through. But when my gay friends, when my African American friends, when my Hispanic friends, you know, when, when something like this hits the national news, it like reverberates in their soul and any unhealed thing creates a sense of fear and anxiety and a place of feeling unsafeness. And so, you know, whenever I've had this, I hear these national events, I wonder like, what is the thing that I can do? And, and having just experienced that on my, myself, I would say, um, no one called me at all. And I think even if they would have called me and said, how are you doing? I'd be like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Cause that's what we do as a, well, I do as an Asian. It's like minimize, bury deep, any emotional feeling. And, but, but there is a part of you that goes like, why are they asking? And then you kind of like, wait a second, wait, am I fine? I don't know. I mean, it just puts in a question mark, like, how are you doing? And irrespective if they are numbed out from it or not, I think what it, do, it does for me, because I sat in satsang yesterday with a group of people that I've been sitting with weekly with, and just having that group, it felt like I had a bunch of friends and family around me. I'm not even that close to this group, but I, I sit with them every week. And just getting that phone call. So if folks, I'm just asking everyone out there, if you have a uh, Asian friend, um, just put a call out for them. They may be like, whoa, why, do you, why are you calling me? What's going on with you? But it, it, it has probably affected them very deeply, and they don't, they're they probably not even aware of it, and you just calling makes them feel like 
I have people who love and care for me and they're my family, even in a place where I'm feeling completely alienated. I mean, today I was walking down the street and I saw, I heard like someone walking behind me and I turned around and there's a, a young bearded white man and I got scared and I thought oh, that would have never happened before. Have you done, do you have, well, I know you have techniques. I know you've been down this road. I know you do this with others, but is there somebody who can do clearing work on you and on ancestral wounds through you? And if not, I will volunteer to <laughs> set a time up this weekend and do some with you. <laughs> um, that's so sweet. Sure. I, I mean, I'm up for, I, I do it. Um, I do it myself. I, um, but, um, I think I have done a lot of ancestral wounding stuff, but if you have stuff, I'm 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 up for yep. it. I think that, um, and that's very sweet of you to offer. Um, but I I do I'm just putting a note out there for people who have Asian friends and family, or maybe it's a person that you see at the grocery store, to just ask them how they're doing, and to tell them that you care and that you're there for them in whatever way you can do, because it really and and then and I've had a note to myself that when this happens again, to do the same for the other people that I love and that are around me. And I, I just didn't get it. I, I, and that's the, beauty, that's the beauty in this dark moment is having this unify and make me understand or get me to a point of understanding myself and others more deeply. That's the beauty. And the pain was well worth that beauty. And um, it's so painful as heck. <laughs> You yeah. just got me something, thinking something that's completely tangential and and right right on point. And I know we're going to keep this as a short one today. And but it just got me thinking, uh, going along the lines of um, Lynn McTaggart and power of eight and group intention and coherence and all of these things. What if we had a group? Um, and I don't know how big that group is. I'm I'm, I'm picturing this massive group that got together and used any clearing modality and their whole focus, I'm picturing like a, a functional nonprofit, call it an ancestral wound nonprofit. Right. And their job is to get together once a day, once a week, maybe every day and you have full timers and all they do is clear ancestral wounds off of every group out there. And that's their whole job, not to be rewarded on an individual level where you're helping one individual, but if we went after the collective zeitgeist, and just started clearing and clearing and clearing. How light could we get as a human species once we start cutting the cords to all of these wounds? I think that we would get, I think that when you look at what happened at that event on Friday, and this is me just hypothesizing, but understanding um, from a, as being a coach is that when you are told you're not enough, whether it's a religious authority or, you know, friends and family and or um, your culture is not enough, your race is not enough, you're not as good enough Catholic, any of these things, um, they, they create trauma. And if unresolved, you project that trauma onto others. And Bingo. until we can peacefully resolve that trauma and heal all the wounds, then... You can do all the marches in the world, and I and I love marches, and I and I am in support of them. But until those wounds are healed, you're going to continue to project that pain onto other people, and the kind of harmony that you're seeking is not going to be there. So bringing it back to this show, you had said what you did is you said I give this up to you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's like one of the ways I think that actually the thing I did yesterday, where is I was just chanting Om Mani Padma Om. And I was just chanting that over and over again with the help of my teacher and the help of my Sangha and support, chanting that and then remembering that I'm supported, maybe if I don't even feel it at the moment by the earth, by higher consciousness, by the vibration of the group that every single thing is supporting me. I think when that happens, 
um, we can do such beautiful collective healing. So if you do that, I'm all in, Michael. I, I right. am willing I'm to do that. I'm going to remember you said that because there's something here, whether it's today or a decade from now, I'm going to find a way to do that. I'm going to find a way to make that happen because I know how powerful the individual clearings are and, and I'll get a group together with hundreds and, and I'll do clearing work on the hundreds at once. And I know how powerful that is, so why not? And, and, and then going to Om Mane Padme Hum, that is, I haven't used it in a few months here. I'm trying to think if I've used it in this house. No, I think it's been since Colorado, but that was my go-to mantra in the shower where I'm like, I'm a little bit stressed out. I want to get that energy off me. And I'm in the shower going, Om Mane Padme Hum. And, ex and yeah. accentuating those, yes, the mms. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> well, you're bringing upon the chanting that millions of people have been doing for thousands of years. So when you say that, you're bringing, you're bringing the big guns to help that's not the right. You're being the greatest <laughs> highlight source. We'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll go to, to, to help bring Bruce, into that. Rick Hansen and Bruce Lipton and, and so forth. You're bringing in the myelinated superhighway. Yes. Of an energetic imprint of the universe. You're going to an energetic groove in that record that is so well established. It's such a healing frequency. And that's what happens. An ancestral wound is a frequency. Om Mane Padme Hum is a frequency. What we're doing is we're, we're in a sense, replacing one with the other or canceling it out. Yes, exactly. Yes. And so these are healing opportunities, healing crisis, yes. healing opportunities, same thing. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And this morning, I've been taking, I tell you, I've been like writing a little notes when I dream, I write them down. And I'm remembering so much more of my dreams because these dreams, as we had talked a couple sessions ago with Robert Moss, they're your soul speaking to you. And last night I said, please help me to integrate the learnings from today and also to heal whatever needs to be healed. And my dream yesterday was I created a baby and the baby was a rebirth. I mean, it was, it was symbolic of my soul being reborn at some level. And, and specifically what it was is <laughs> in this weird dream that I had is that I was born a male um, and then the, the doctor decided that um, something was going on with my head and I needed to be transformed into a female. So she changed my genitalia and just changed me automatically to a female. And as I'm like, what is this my soul trying to tell me? But it's like it's owning these feminine, deep feminine powers that most women, definitely myself, have completely forgotten about. And so um, in this crying, I think of um, the women at the Wailing Wall and just crying for, for the grief and the loss of all their ancestors that can't, you know, feel a sense of home anymore and like bringing that back. So I, I felt like that's what I was doing yesterday. It was super. And in fact, I had that vision when I was crying. I'm like, oh, this is the Wailing Wall. In, 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 I think it's in Jerusalem that I've been to. Um, and there's just such a deep felt sense of grief for all of the people that have suffered before you. And uh, yeah, so I think that that's what I brought back. It's like my old wise crone self that knows how to do this. So that was pretty cool. Reborn as a woman. <laughs> I was reborn as a woman in my dream. Last couple thoughts, and then I'm going to move slowly and see what happens yeah. at this RV dealership. I'm yes, excited to see. Me too. Um, because I had a dream last night that I interpreted as certainly moving slowly, but I was also swimming deep under the water and had to move quickly to get under the water fast. So maybe that was the moving slowly and quickly. Mm. But going to your dream and your dream interpretation, have you ever thought of wearing even more feminine things for a while to really embody and take back that power? That's a really good idea. I think I, I am beginning to understand the importance of surround having your external piece reflect what's internally. Um, not internal. yet, not yet, but I will, I will think about that. I love that idea. In fact, oddly enough, not surprisingly, I had just talked to a client about that because she was saying that there are now all these Zoom wardrobe specialists and to present yourself positively on Zoom. And that's funny. Yeah. Well, and, cause, cause I'm, I, don't, I, I don't know what you're, what, what you're wearing there, but I've got on, 
you know, a, a nice polo shirt. Yeah, look, look, we were saying, like, we look like we're from, <laughs> the two of us are, like, from Zoom. <laughs> Jessica's like, I think all pant sales are down through the floor right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't see you from the waist Yeah, up. exactly. You just to buy, like, five shirts, you're done. Um, but I said, she said, what do you think? And I, and I thought about it, and I said, you know, as a coach, I always want someone to be building their internal power and resources and more so than relying on external. And at the same time, if external dressings, you know, whether it's getting Botox or writing, wearing a bright purple shirt, um, they can be a quicker path. Sometimes they're kind of little quick pick-me-ups that can give you an accelerated boost to where you want to go. So if that, if wearing that stuff makes you feel on the inside fantastic and it accelerates your confidence, then do it. If you're doing it to please others because they'll like you more, then don't do it. Just do it based on how, if it fuels you internally. Vibration, vibration, vibration. If yeah. it's supporting your vibration, I've got all these flowers around me now, really holding space here, supporting that vibration. We're looking at what can we get rid of? What can we get rid of? What can we get rid of? Because it had an old energy to it. What can we bring in that's new? Not needing to go spend crazy and certainly don't want to extract out of Mother Earth, but what helps hold us hold the vibration where we want to be at, realizing that everything has an energy and everything has a memory to it. You start to get hypersensitive of what you're bringing in, what you're wearing, what you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. So wearing for more feminine clothes. Yes. I don't, what, what I've noticed is that it will just happen organically. Like you'll see me next time and I'll probably be wearing like a, a flouncy bell gown. Like, I don't know what <laughs> happened. At least I did change today my you'll shirt. Have flowers on your desk. <laughs> exactly. I actually have been getting flowers. I was thinking about getting flowers. So yes, I'm going that direction, Michael. Okay. I'm praying to the RV gods. May Michael find the perfect, recreational vehicle and more importantly my Michael find the best vehicle for for his future adventures and may it support him fully um mm -hmm. and support all those around him that I'm is my excited. greatest wish i'll tell you about it next week good uh the ones we're looking at both have what's called a garage on the back of it it's 12 Ooh. or 13 feet long that we're going to convert into a both a recording studio and an art studio so we can live comfortably on the road and support us. We didn't have that support last time around. It was a beautiful crash and burn. Maybe I shouldn't use the word crash, but it was, it was awesome for what it was. And now we get to do things a different way out of the learning, all on purpose, on all path, and all bring it full home here in a place of surrender. If it's meant to be, it will be. So I'm going to move slowly and expeditiously and slowly still and see how it goes. Yeah. Fire underwater. <laughs> That's what I had. Lee over what I don't remember. That's the I Ching of it that I saw in my head when you said that. Right? Because you said moving, but under, but movement, fire with water. Right? So that it's like it's done in the flow, moving with the flow. Yes, I like that. So on that note, for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Move like fire underwater, breathe in, surrender, and own your true self. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>